it's not his worst film, um, but yeah. it's pretty poor. Speaking of which, uh, shall we move on to <laughs> Death Proof? Yeah, did, did I telegraph anything there, Scott, at all? <laughs> Tarantino's attempt to create his own version of the types of films he grew up with continued in 2007 with Grindhouse. His collaboration with Robert Rodriguez, in which the duo produced a pair of films intended to be shown as a double bill, but only released as such in the US, that attempted to capture the aesthetic of the low-budget horror and exploitation films typically shown in grindhouse cinemas. Rodriguez made Planet Terror, and Tarantino made Death Proof. Death Proof, and not Death Prof, as my fingers repeatedly insisted on typing last (laughs) night, which I imagine is a high school-based take on Joel Schumacher's Falling Down. Or quite possibly a better film. (laughs) Which would have made for a considerably more entertaining film was the next line I had written, Greg. (laughs) (laughs) Incidentally, the only Tarantino film I hadn't previously seen before this episode... We're sorry. (laughs) Yeah, sorry, man. If I'd known that, I would have warned you. (laughs) I think you did, actually, but... um, I've seen them all now. I'm a completionist, so... um, (laughs) It's a... Death Proof is a mashup of 70s slasher and muscle car films. In contemporary Austin, Texas, there is a group of young women who go to a taqueria and then to a pub. Nothing they do or say is in any way interesting, <laughs> entertaining or consequential. After 45 minutes, anything at all happens when <laughs> Kurt Russell's stuntman Mike drives his Death Proof car head on into the car containing the young women at high speed, killing them all. Michael Park's Elmer Graw pops in from Kill Bill for some reason and says he can't prove the stuntman Mike murdered the girls but he can make sure that if he does it again it won't be in Texas (laughs) somehow. (laughs) Very moral stance anyway. (laughs) We cut a little over a year later in Tennessee and footage which is now pristine whereas the first half of the film was portrayed as old scratched damaged. This is a reference (laughs) <laughs> here we find another group of young women after another inconsequential 45 minutes passes and after the women have left their attractive friend alone in the middle of nowhere with a strange man stuntman Mike appears and attempts to kill them but this time his victims fight back there then follows 20 minutes of hugely underwhelming car chases and collisions and terrible ugly looking horrible sounding cars Kurt Russell is the villain though a pretty poor one is he can't do menacing, but given his would-be victims miss a good two dozen chances to stop to allow one of their number, who is hanging onto the car's bonnet, to get into the car, and then injure and endanger lots of innocent people, before not even bothering to check whether the human hood ornament is okay when they do stop, I'd have been quite happy for everyone to die. But that's a little too close to caring about anything in Death Proof, something the previous 100 minutes worked hard to ensure I wouldn't and shouldn't do. Death Proof is, by a margin, and a pretty vast one at that, Quentin Tarantino's least essential, least entertaining and generally worst film. Whether any of its lack of dynamism is due to the fact that Tarantino himself served as DP here, rather than his usual collaborator Robert Richardson, or even Andre Sekula, a secure, the cinematographer in Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, I don't know. What I do know is that if you make an homage to slasher films and then limit your slasher to, effectively, two scenes in your two hour long film, you done messed up. <laughs> it is. And to make up for our last episode, Craig, and I apologise, garbage. <laughs> uh, and I would like, just like to mention too that the, the whole Grindhouse experiment was an absolute failure and the fact that the best film to come out of the Grindhouse experience was in fact based on one of the spoof trailers they created mm-hmm. says everything. Yeah, I feel, margin. I feel robbed because the way this kind of was originally kind of filtered down as pitches in, in various magazines sounded great because mm-hmm. it sounded like what you were going to get was basically a version of Death Proof that was about 45 minutes long, a version of Planet Terror, which would have been about 45 minutes long, with all those cool trailers like the um, Machete and Hobo with a Shotgun and all that stuff in between, which yeah. was much better than the actual films around it. Um, Planet Terror also was kind of crappy too. Uh, but I can imagine if you chopped the hell out of Death Proof, it would be entertaining enough to maintain that kind of run time. Same with Planet Terror. And as a kind of experience for a few hours with that and in between, I think that would have been a quite a cool experience. 
what we've got instead is an absolute disaster zone. The death proof is just absolutely terrible. It's mm-hmm. I don't know if like, there's an argument. Okay, you've, you've you've got the bride in, in in Kill Bill, but a lot of a lot of Tarantino's films do not feature females in much regard. You know, um, it, obviously the one exception being the one where he's adapting someone else's work. So whether he was just decided like, no, I can write female characters. I'm going to do this, and then proves that he can't, or at least he can't write <laughs> these female characters, um, is whether he was just taking that upon himself to try and prove a point. He, it, this was not the venue for it, and this film is just deathly, deathly dull. Um, it's so easy to fast forward to it to the, what, charitably 10 minutes of actual interesting footage. I don't mind the car chases. I think they're, they're okay for what they are, but... This is no way to support two hours worth of film either side of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah just very disappointing. Uh, whether I'd forgotten how much I hated this film the first time round, because it wasn't actually <laughs> until I'd rewatched it that I went back and read my review from the old website, <laughs> um, or whether it's just that I was being strangely uncharacteristically optimistic and hoping that actually I would have missed. <laughs> maybe, maybe I would quotation marks appreciate it more <laughs> this time around i mean uh, uh, it's uh, aged like a fine milk yes it's aged like a fine uh turd uh <laughs> yeah I, like you say the, the value of this was always going to be in uh, the grindhouse experiment as an interesting experience uh and this is an interesting experience with all the interest removed <laughs> and the experience removed <laughs> and it's just baffling that this film runs uh, to quite the length it does like you say scott as originally advertised the notion that these were going to be essentially short films bolted together uh around these trailers in, a, in an homage to the uh to the, the the that format i think there was i think there was some sort of cultural value in that and it's something that he and rodriguez could easily have gotten away with mm. but the choices every choice made around this film is absolutely baffling uh, the characters are spiteful but then we're expected or encouraged to leer over them i feel Kurt Russell is completely miscast, uh, yeah. I think, as as uh, stuntman Mike. I mean, remarkably, apparently, there were scenes, whether or not they were filmed or they were planned and omitted, that would have clarified that the reason that stuntman Mike was doing this was because the only way he could get sexual gratification was from murdering people with his car. I would rather have spent the time watching Kurt Russell beat himself off in a car wreck than I would have done <laughs> listening to the conversations between these characters. They're just... You'd rather this have been Crash. Yeah, essentially. Uh, uh, they're just... Uh, un- I mean, the characters are just unsalvageable. I don't know. Why do you think I want to spend... 45 minutes with this group and then another 50 minutes with this group I don't I I don't I really don't and if you and if you expected that I would then there's something incredibly wrong in this relationship Quentin um, I had to take issue with something you said Craig before you carry I don't mean to interrupt you but mm. you called them characters yes yes no. sorry cutouts um, I, it's just a really baffling and a really a, a a real sort of missed opportunity, and I wish someone else had picked the ball up and run with it in the interim because it was an intriguing project on paper, but just completely neutered um, at every possible stage, and we're left with this weird. Just it's not even a it's not even a sort of Frankenstein's monster of a thing. It's just crap. <laughs> Can you maybe imagine this as like a a short film anthology series? That might have worked. Um. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know about um, Scott saying like thinking that this might have been like forty five minutes. This doesn't have forty five minutes of material in it. It's a two hour film. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I think I think it's a good but, call. If this were like a six part anthology series on Netflix or something, you know, and you got other talented directors to submit sort of like really grimy sort of uh, genre pieces, yeah. then I think it could be interesting. But it's an homage to Grindhouse. Like here, you've got like 30, 35 minutes. Um, you don't have to like adhere to TV schedules if you're on something like Netflix. But that's the kind of thing I'm thinking. He's having an entry. It's an homage to this, these kind of sleazy, low budget things um, that were popular for a while. And you try an interesting idea and like, mm. maybe, you, maybe you start with like your pitch effectively as one of the fake trailers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, that worked, machete worked. It looked really interesting. It was funny, 
Machete actually works for about a one and quart, one film and a quarter. Yeah. Because um, it's like part of the start of Machete Kills actually has worked and it just it completely runs out of any steam or any jokes um, or any kind of material. It works up to that point. So it's like, it's, yeah. it's the kind of, it's kind of amusing that that was actually the best film in it. Yeah. But th- this film is so empty and, and I, 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 like Michael Park's character suggests that and starting man Mike's is uh, is getting sexual gratification for this, but it's like it's almost a throwaway line. Mm. And I mean, again, no, it's, like, it's the biggest problem. It's like if it's a slasher film that doesn't actually have your slasher in it for an, almost the entire runtime, mm. you've messed up. Yeah, you've got that seriously wrong. Yeah, flip it around because I mean, for for again, Kurt Russell miscast, but I still would rather have spent more time with him than with. I'm sorry, but with either of the two groups of young women, I mean, honestly, that that first car wreck, which we get replayed gloriously uh, and repeat four times to see the fate of each character in the car, I, the, it, instantaneously after that scene was over, the only the only thing I felt was good. I'm, g- I'm glad that <laughs> happened to those people, and I probably yeah. shouldn't feel that way because I, I don't think that was necessarily your intention. Yeah. Because I think you could do, except you don't do it in two hours, but if you kind of, maybe it's like use something like Steven Spielberg's Duel as a template, mm. but actually have, rather than the, the truck chasing him through the whole film, mm. have several kills. Yeah. And maybe at the end of the film, you start to see who this is. And, and maybe it's somebody you've seen earlier in the film you didn't realise. Uh, there's so many ways you could make this interesting, but mm. like, it's almost like Tarantino avoided every possible way here. And it, it's just awful. Have it mainly from Stuntman Mike's point of view as he sort of eavesdrops on these characters and stalks them and stuff like that without necessarily having to see Mike, but, you know, mainly from his point of view. There's something interesting there potentially to be had. But mm. the, 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 our time is spent with entirely the wrong groups of people, and I'm not... I, to this day, I have... And on a second watch, I still have no concept of what the payoff of, of this is supposed to be. Uh, are we supposed to be cheering them on as they beat the crap out of him at the end of the movie? Well, I'm glad he did that because he's a murderer and I don't like murderers but <laughs> yes, it but didn't feel like a catharsis for me. They didn't have any compassion for all the other people's lives that they put in danger in that. Or even each other's lives. Only killed on the motorbike. Yeah, they didn't have compassion um, enough for each other to like you say, yeah. apply the brakes to the car. Yeah, and like I said, they, they left Mary Elizabeth Winstead in the middle of nowhere in that chili suit uniform with a guy who yeah. suggested she was a porn actress. Like, that's, that's funny. That's a good way to treat your friends. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just, it's so bad. And like, what do women talk about when they're rolling? Well, sex with men. Anything else? No, no, that's basically all that in beauty magazines. Yeah. <laughs> this film is not passing the Bechdel test. No. <laughs> No. But he cannot trade women, Mr. Turner. A really weird really curiosity and, and not a good one. 